Hey everybody, it's Todd from the Guitar Knobs. Uh, welcome back to Pedal Boards 101. This is part two of Pedal Boards 101. If you are hitting this one first and don't realize that there's a part one, for goodness sakes, go back and listen to part one first. <laughs> uh, if you have listened to the first part, well, then I'm sure you are awaiting this as much as I am, even though I was there when I recorded it. So without further ado, this is part two of Pedal Boards 101. Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Uh, da, 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 da. Ground issues. Ground issues. What? Okay. Before you... Well, what's the ground issue? Yep. Ground issue. It buzzing and stuff. Buzzing and stuff. All right. right. Usually 60 or 120 cycle. Um, it is what usually happens. It's almost never happens with a tube c- cable method, meaning you're putting all your pedals in front of your amp. So you got your old Vox, you got your old Fender, you got your eight pedals lined up going in the front. Almost never do you have a ground issue. yippee ki Usually where ground issues will come in mm-hmm. is when you're running four cable method. Mm-hmm. Some stuff in front of the amplifier mm-hmm. and then another set of pedals in the effects loop. Yeah. The reason being that the amplifier ground isn't ground isn't ground. The uh huh. So if you look at a schematic on some of these more modern dual channel amps and everything, <laughs> you clean out your ears there, Todd. Yeah, I had, to, <laughs> I had to process that one. Yeah, no, it's a, and if you look at a schematic for uh, an amplifier, you'll have earth ground, chassis ground, and circuit ground. Ah. Right. You've got different, and they're isolated from each other. Sometimes with capacitors and stuff. Yeah, so. Yeah. A lot of times with, usually it's a high gain amp and that's usually when people use a 4K method, they have a Mesa Boogie or a Marshall or something. They will tie all their pedals through a shared one spot daisy chain. Okay. Okay. Plug them all in, power it up, and all of a sudden they get this horrible err buzzing. Mm -hmm. They're like, what the crap? They unplug the pedals, plug them in one at a time, everything works. They plug in three at a time. They plug in the pedals in front, fine. Put in pedals in the effects loop, fine. They plug it all back in together, and the the buzz is back. Yep. That's exactly what happened to your board. Yeah. Here, cowboy. We fixed it. Yep. Well, and here's what happens there, is, and this is why you want a power brick with isolated outputs and isolated grounds. That's what I got. The ground of the effects loop, the audio ground for the effects send and return on your cabling, is not tied to the ground of the input of the guitar amp. They're Mm. actually isolated from each other. So when you plug in all your pedals, cool. You plug in the power supply that's a shared ground. It then ties the ground of your effects loop through all your pedals to the ground of the input, creating a ground loop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is probably half of the ground issues I have to face is when guys do that. They have, and sometimes also too, it's pedals touching each other. Mm. Even if you use an isolated uh, power source as isolated grounding for every. That is a great point. When you're saying pedals touching each other, are you saying the pedal, the, the patch cables? Either. Patch mm-hmm. cables, because, so, because the outside of the, of the, the, the ends themselves, the plugs themselves, yep. are, the outside is your ground. Right. So you have those two uh, ends touch each other, and one is in front of your amp, one's in your effects loop, mm-hmm. causes a ground loop. What if, all, what if you're not doing a loop? Is that something that people should really be concerned if about? If you do a, four ca- or a two cable method where everything's in front of your amp, right. it's almost never a concern. Okay, good. It's almost always when you're running effects loop, and it's that these high gain amps, they usually have the input uh, into your amplifier. So, so spread your cables out a little bit or slip a little, tape them. Piece of electrical tape, anything. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'll have guys bring me a pedal a board and they're, and they're using a, you know, a one spot brick thing yep. and they've done all the right cabling and they're like, I've still got six cycle hum. They bring in, I go, yeah, but this plug is touching this plug. Yeah. And he's like, what? And I literally move it over a millimeter and the buzz goes away. Nice. Yeah. I, I still like have work to do, I guess, then. Not if you don't have problems. <laughs> well, <laughs> right? Oh, he's got problems. Uh, I, yeah. I need, <laughs> yeah, I need someone with a new set of ears. Really? <laughs> That's well, not a, I need are, a different are you, are you, set of ears. <laughs> are you looking for a donor? <laughs> yeah. What I, I don't know how was, to address that. I, I, what I meant was I need a new set of ears to listen to what I got going on. I yeah, know what you, I, know I what hear what you're saying. Instead yeah. of my ears. I know what you're saying, yeah. A fresh set of ears. Right, right, right. Somebody else may, like Todd might, when he first heard your rig last way it was running, he was like, this isn't right, dude. Right, right. Yeah. That's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. 
All right. Yeah. All right. So that's gr- most grounding issues. Most Again, grounding usually issues. four cable method, usually high gain amps because they're designed with isolated grounds. Gotcha. Okay. You could also end up having a pedal that's just gone a little wonky too. Yeah. I have a pedal that was doing that. I was just turn on and it's like, yeah. like, well, more err, you know. Err, yeah. Yeah, 60 cycle. Yeah. It, it, it was like, whoa, what happened or, to this pedal? Actually, 120 DC yeah, voltage. Anyways. But um, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, oh boy, troubleshooting a pedal board is a nightmare. And I, let me inject that there. If you're troubleshooting a problem on your pedal board, do one step at a time, slowly and methodically. Yeah. Maybe even write down in a notebook what you're Plug changing. one pedal in. Yeah. Plug it into your amp. Change it. one work? cable at a time. Connect the next one. Yes. Plug it in. Does it work? Too many guys will bring me a pedal board in pieces because they were at a gig and they got frustrated and they unplugged everything all at once. <sighs> and it's like, no, 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 no. You, you don't know what the problem was. You have to, you know, yeah, unplug you each have cable. To refigure it out. Yeah. No boy, no. Very methodical. Okay. What's next? Okay. Choosing pedal board styles and your layout. Pedal board styles and layout. Yeah. Flat board or yeah. an angled board. Angle board, flat board, multi level, multi layer oh, board, level, yeah. multi layer, temple. Yeah, those are great boards, by the way. We'll plug them. Those are made. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, and that's all personal preference, but it's Mom. just something to consider. Um, Mike Stand has. Oh, Jared, yeah. Jared with his the Mutron. Mutron. Yeah. yeah. Those are yeah, popular. It's on too. the stand. It's yeah. a huge, <laughs> it's bigger than what you guys <laughs> yeah. think. Okay. Oh, no. I'm, I'm you're going to have yeah. to start. It's paying about the size of a brick. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so that, that's just personal preference. The flat of obviously is typically lower profile to the ground. You don't have to step up into it as much, but the angled, you can reach back pedals easier. Personal preference. Yeah. You know, but something to consider when you're building your pedal board. Uh, something else to consider when you're doing an angled mm. or a flat board. Where Anybody? To put power supply. Exactly. Shoe size. <laughs> shoe yeah. size. Well, yeah, yeah that's literally. seriously. But uh, my Mutron's angled. Stop. <laughs> um, Mutron. Okay. You're if you have a flat board, most flat board yeah. makers will buy the the little housing that you can put on top of your power mm-hmm. supply so that you can put a pedal on top of yeah, it. Yeah, a riser, you mean. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they'll do that. Or, yeah, I mean, it depends, you know, how much real estate. If you need a riser in the back, to put, like you said, put another pedal on top of it. Some guys just put pedals right on top of their power supplies. You know, put that's where they'll put their tuner or whatever, you know. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So, yeah. But definitely, that's something to consider, obviously, if you're running flat. And like you said, some of these CS are so thin they can fit underneath the... Correct. If you're so a flat board doesn't have to be um, a actually completely the ground, flat, yeah. uh, completely flat board. There's the ones that are like completely flat. Mm-hmm. Typically, you see like two silver handles. They're yeah. they're aluminum edged plywood, plywood with a Down. black top. Yep. Um, and then there is the pedal train style, which is mm-hmm. considered a flat because it's it, it's still flat and not angled up. Those ones you can put power supplies underneath, right? Some, yeah. uh, actually, actually, all I believe all of them now you can put because they're either so there are angled mm-hmm. pedal train boards and then there's flat pedal train boards. The True Tone CS6 will fit under those, right? So that is a consideration. So you can still have a flat one with that, just you can't do it on one of the uh, aluminum edged flat, yeah, right? Right, flat, flat. and with one of those, like you're talking about, it's very select power supplies you then have a choice of. If yes. you're going to put it on the underside, yes. that doesn't mean you can't put it on the top, like we talked about, right? Yeah. Or you could have two of them, or you, yeah, you just stack them up on top That's of each other, very absolutely, expensive. yeah, you do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. So, the difference between flat and angled, or as Tony mentioned, out you can do flat with risers, yep, all personal preference, right? And there's all kinds of angled ones, there are aluminum ones, wooden uh, ones, gator, I think, gator yep. board, is, it, yep. those are uh, bent aluminum. Uh, yeah, there's a few companies doing that now. Yeah, that are really, really lightweight. Tone too. Snob, our friends, uh, right. Blackbird. Those are all similar. So wood wedge shape, custom mm-hmm. built. There's so many options. So Mine many. Uh, is aluminum, and it's and a temple board. It is. And a word of advice: don't use the Velcro sticky on that if it's painted. Ah, uh, the we, paint comes off. You know, we, you're not all the paint used off. the Velcro sticky on it at all. That's the. Pedal. I didn't know that. <laughs> what what, what, what <laughs> do they? Oh, the pedal, temple, the they, temple has a has a, a yeah. an attachment, the bolts that that yeah. screws on underneath, so mm-hmm. that like if you're gigging a lot, they will not. Move. Right. I need to get some of those. Uh, occasionally, you see somebody that does a temple board that doesn't have the screw things on it, and they just zip tie everything. Yeah. Yeah, you know, now it's it doesn't look as pretty, but it's not going anywhere. No. And it will come off black. in a second. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, so yeah, 
pedal boards. There's no right or wrong. It's all personal preference. Do your research. Yep. Um, but when you're deciding on a pedal board, um, by this time you figured out what your order your pedals are, what pedals you're going to use, how all that many kind of stuff. you have, how many you have, how many you might want. That's another big thing. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, that, that's always a whole, go let's bigger. Not even, <laughs> it's like yeah. a good pair of slacks room to expand. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's not even go to what else we could put on there. Yes. But, um, but when you're looking at pedal boards, uh, your layout, decide how you're going to lay things out as far as there's usually two different ways of doing it. It's signal flow, mm -hmm. which means that you're going to start on one end and just go right in order, mm -hmm. you know, your wah to your overdrive to your blah, blah, blah. Yep. Or convenience, meaning, okay, I want these pedals on the is. front because those are the ones I'm going to step on most often. Yep. And these will be in the back or the taller ones in the back or whatever you yep. want for convenience. Yep. Obviously, the signal flow one will be the easiest because cabling, you can use pre-made little cables because they're just going literally, you know, one inch between every single pedal. Right. But if you go convenience, that's when you're talking, okay, I've, I go from a pedal on the far left to the you know bottom right. right and, and that's a great point. I, I mean, one of the best guitar gear sources out there is uh, that pedal show. And mm -hmm. the board that they typically show has... Um, uh, there's like an upper level and a lower level. So there's mm -hmm. a, the, their board actually lifts up on a, yeah. on a, mm -hmm. um, what do you want to call that? A thing, a hinge, a, a hinge. hydraulic a hinge. cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> it lifts up on a hinge to reveal the other, the, the, the sort of stationary pedals that you're not constantly accessing. Right. So those ones are set, set it, forget it mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then your top pedals. So that's something to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's not that fancy. So yeah, so um, so there you go. So the, you decide what kind of layout you want, and again, by this time you've already got what pedals going in what order, you know. So you're just deciding where do I want my overdrive so I can hit it the easiest, that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, I would also mention that when you are considering a new pedal board, if you have the option to do a powered pedal board, so the pedal board itself is powered, hmm. and meaning you you're you're controlling your power, your on and off, and your actual AC out from the pedal board itself instead of in and out of the power source mm -hmm. underneath the pedal board. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of, mostly you'll see like the wedge boards have yeah. that little power switch, Mine AC does. out, and also uh, input in and input out. Right. Hugely, on the sides. hugely convenient mm -hmm. and keeps things tidy. Can be, but mm -hmm. you got to remember this. Every single thing you add in that chain yep. is one more potential thing to fail. Mm -hmm. So just by putting, and I, I hear you, and, and I'm the same way. I've got a little a patch bay breakout box on my board that has, I plug all my ins and outs mm -hmm. on this one box. So I'm okay. not plugging into the pedals. But of course, I've just added in an extra eight quarter inch jacks that mm -hmm. if any one of those fail... So you got to keep that in mind True. and it's only as good as the manufacturer. I've seen some of them. There's some lesser companies out there that have patch bays and ins and outs built into their pedal boards mm -hmm. and they're built so junky. They fail so often. Mm. You're really buying a headache. That's fair. Versus one that's really well made with really great connections, great wiring and everything yeah. that you're probably, it's more stable than plugging in and out of your pedals. So that's something yeah. To think about. yeah, something to think about. Yeah. It's yeah. just like all this. It's, it's a give and take. Yep. Um, but once you get everything laid out, you decide where you want stuff, measurement. You have to decide how big your pedal board's going to be. Right. And that may also affect, once you do the final layout, you may go, oh, crap, my pedal board's 42 inches wide yeah. by 20 inches deep. Yeah. Time to cut some pedals. And again, this is why you do all of this. Or get a different uh, different board that offers you variable layouts uh, over exactly. under all Effects that Effects processor. Yeah, we're just, yeah, exactly. Buy a... <laughs> buy a Digitech RP9 and call it There it, it is. <laughs> I got an RP or something. Yeah, or have a couple boards. You yeah. have your kind of mess around board and your yeah. sort of standard board. I, that's what yeah. I'm Lots of people have through. several boards, yeah. So, but yeah, as stupid as it sounds, measure it. And then when you're measuring, don't put the pedals right next to each other as if there's nothing plugged in. Yeah. I have guys do that all the time. They'll bring me a box of pedals. Go, yeah, here's the layout I want. And I look at the layout on a piece of paper. I look at the board. I'm well, like... You have to get rid of three pedals. Right. Uh -huh. I was like, once you plug in the jacks and they go... Oh, and it's like, yeah, once you plug in all these connectors and, or even, and, and you see these really thin pancake connectors, all these companies coming out with now. Yeah. Great. But they put the pedals so close to each other that the buttons are like two inches apart. Well, I'm a yeah. size 14. Shit. Uh -huh. And I'm going to hit six know, pedals at a time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 
exactly. No, and that's no bueno. No bueno. And I, I typically tell people if they actually want to be able to use the the actuators on the pedal, they need to be minimum three inches apart. Mm. So putting pedals any closer, the foot switches to be closer than three inches, you're not going to accurately be able to turn them on and off. You know, you'll be turning sideways, stepping on your on the yeah. tippy toes and all that. Yeah. You know, so those are all things to to consider when you're doing a layout. Don't put them all next to each other. Am I going to be able to hit this like this? Yeah. Yada yada. It might not look as cool to have them all spread out, but but. Yeah, do you want to be able to turn that pedal on without turning on off everything else? Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. Um, another thing doing layout, avoid placing your wah or a wireless unit anywhere near an analog power supply. Both of those will pick up a ton of noise. One more time. Hmm? Avoid putting your wah or a wireless near an analog power supply. Okay. Um, Voodoo Labs power supplies all have transformers in them. The digital ones will still give off some RF noise, but it'd be very minimal. Okay. So anytime I lay out a board, I, I ask the person, where do you want your watt? Left or right? And I put the power supply put the power on, the on the other opposite side. side. Gotcha. Exactly. It's never going to get rid of it completely, but some of the problems I have when people bring in boards, the power supply is literally underneath the wall. Mm. So, oh, uh, let's see what else we got. I think that's pretty much it on layout. All right. Let's What's talk next? crazy add on options. We already mentioned patch bay. You mentioned having a pedal board with the patching built into it. Yep. All those are options you can look at. Okay. Um, also, a true bypass loop switcher. Do you have that on your board, Todd? No. No, like I a... I don't think so. Where you can plug in your overdrives <laughs> and everything into it, and then no. you leave your pedals on, and you just... Yeah. No, I don't have that. That is something that I want to... I wanted to address on its own, on, a, on like a whole other like understanding switchers and stuff, because that's... Black magic. Yeah. It's black magic, man. And those are yeah. options too. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm actually finishing up a pedal board where the guy's got a mastermind PCB, which it sends out MIDI messages as well as has 10 loops on it. Ugh. So he's got all his overdrives. He's going to have them all left on. And when he hits preset number one, it'll automatically. Yeah. That's like pedal. That's like that pedal show. Like yeah. they're hitting the that's switcher, f- which is turning on combinations. Exactly. Exactly. So that's a black whole magic. nother thing you can add on, make your pedal board even bigger. You guys ready for cabling? Let's We're do gonna it. Probably get yelled at for skipping over that, but honestly, I mean that that's that's a, that's that's a, a whole one. nother. It's a, it's a really much more. Uh, d- inclusive. Yeah, thing. and we're talking about. I mean, what ten percent of people pedal boards? That's not a. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, it's gr- it seems to be growing. Yeah. But uh, maybe you know we'll we'll try to address that in another another stage. There you go. So capacitance cabling. Um, Basically, the higher the capacitance of the cable itself, it's going to roll off more high end the more cable you have. It just okay. keeps adding with every foot. Right. right. It's usually measured picofarads by foot. Is there a standard? No. Okay. No. I, I, I got some numbers here for you, a high and low, though. Um, standard Belden cable is 190 picofarads per meter. George L is 67 picofarad. So it's roughly a third. So you can tell that when you add up... Well, in fact, did I even do numbers on here? I did. Six meters of Belden is... Meters? One. What the UK are you in? I do everything in meters, man. <laughs> what? Of you course know, you do. Yeah. You got Canadian money, too. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's, it's the engineering. It's more accurate. <laughs> um, but yeah, six meter of Belden cable, 1,140 picofarad. Same distance of George L is 126 picofarad. So, so we, would be, we would be saying that is better way better way better way okay. better so when you see that when you see that really long cable on amazon for 15 bucks it's most likely going to have a ton of capacitance right and i learned this lesson 25 30 years ago i had one pedal had two pedal had three pedal finally built a board of six seven pedals used normal you know inexpensive cable at my music store plugged it all in had everything bypassed hit a cord and it sounded like my amp was kind of underwater Mm. And I went, what happened? You know, what, I don't get it. Everything's turned off. What the hell happened to my sound? Mm-hmm. And it was all that capacitance of all the cabling added on the board to and from. Right. So let's talk about, typically we're just discussing the cabling in and the cabling out. Mm-hmm. How much effect does that have to play on our little patch cables? The whole patch cable world is, that's, there's about as many different kinds of patch cables as there is yep. pedals. Yep. So, um, yeah, 
all, it does. It, it makes a big difference, too, especially if you're talking to a larger pedal board and if you're laying it out in convenience methods so it's not signal flow. Yeah. Yeah, you might have 10, 20 feet of cabling. And the, frankly, the pat, the patch cable stuff is trickier to get measurements on mm. aside from just, you know, how many inches is this yep. and whatever. Uh, so w- if you are, if you know it as a reputable cable maker, like in and out cable maker, chances are you're going to have a quality product in between the pedals if you go with the same brand. Chances are. Meaning like? You mean you want me to name a brand? Well, yeah, or, I mean, are you talking like, like for instance, if you go to a big box store and you get pre-made right end, right end to right end that are one foot, two foot, right. they're going to be Neutrik and they're going to be Belden cable. Right. It's good quality, but it's actually pretty high capacitance. Right. And if you're running 10, 20 feet of cable on your pedal board, that does add up. Right. Versus I'm, if you're talking Lava or George L or somebody like that, part of their sales thing is that they're low capacity. Super low capacity. Yeah. And that's what's going to save your yep. high end. So uh, one of our previous guests, Rattlesnake Cables, a good friend of ours, uh, they have a, their cables tout exactly what you're talking about, like George L and... Mm-hmm. Um, Very low capacity. Yeah. They run... Uh, I, I just pulled it up here. They're running at 20 to 25 P... F slash Pico Farad. Pico Farads. Yes. And that's uh, per foot. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's pretty low. That's very low. That's good. That is definitely among the lowest yeah. right and there. And those are braided like the, the, the flex braid on the outside. Uh, and so those are all pre-made to size? Yeah. He makes them all to size. Oh, okay. Hand makes Excellent. them. Excellent. Montana. Yeah. Check them out. Now, and that is a nice dovetail in the next thing with cabling, soldered versus solderless. Uh-huh. Soldered will always be more durable if they're soldered correctly. So somebody like your buddy Rattlesnake, they'll yep. be very well made. They're going to hold yes. up the best. Yeah. Where solder list is just like you think. You tighten down a thumb screw or a little Allen screw and it holds the cable together. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about the solder list though, you're talking about measuring for length and stuff. Yeah. Oh, they're perfect. Three Monkeys, also on the show previously, they sent us out uh, a test kit with the, with the solder list ones. Mm-hmm. And there's our, they've got a, a unique, it doesn't have a screw or anything. Mm-hmm. And... Man, I was really happy with those, yeah. and they are the wires are the, the wires are thin, and the the heads are this like this. I think they're the smallest ones out there. Yeah, and it's like you can't you can hardly even see it on there. Now those are much more costly than your pancake three inch connectors, but right. you can fully customize a board exactly how you want it. Yep, and be in absolute control of exactly what's going on. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So, that, and for most guys playing the local bar in town, um, you're not putting in a trailer like a, a full tour. Not like you're putting in a trailer to go across town. But yeah, yeah, you don't need that durability of soldered end. You don't have road hands or, or local labor crews. You know, moving right, your stuff. Right. Solderless are usually just fine. You know, yeah. especially if you're going to go with the convenience wiring where yeah. you got things wired all over the board. Yeah, know, and those things motor. for those who aren't aware is like you typically will order like you get like ten feet of cable and ten connectors, mm-hmm. and that'll give you five uh, five actual patch cables mm-hmm. at varying lengths. So to your point, uh, when you we were talking about wiring for convenience, um, I've got all my drives up top. Mm-hmm. And I've got my modulation at the bottom. Now that means that I have to have I got to connect the one yep. at the far end to the one at the other end. Yep. And that you know that took a very long cable, mm-hmm. um, and that's something that I yep. had to accommodate. <laughs> right. It's probably twenty seven and a half inches. So if you tried to order something, twenty four would be too short, thirty six would be too long. What do you do with the extra cable? Yep. yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So there you go yep 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 things yep. to consider and that goes into like we just talked about usually small pedal boards are two cable method signal flow pre-made short little right angles make sense yeah but when you start going larger pedal boards or four and or four cable method yeah that's when you usually you know do the you're, solder you're a lot of cable yeah exactly yeah. yep so that's cabling and when in doubt, if you don't want to do this, if you're just freaked mm-hmm. out by this and this is too much for you to handle, mm-hmm. but you have a lot of great pedals that you want to make highly usable, call a professional. Yep. And they'll help you out. Your and local tech will figure it, it out. It's like a fishmonger, except for pedals. A pedal board monger. A pedal board monger. Mm-hmm. A pedal monger. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of weird sounding, but go ahead. Yeah. We're, we're, rounding, we're rounding the bend, aren't we? We are almost done, yes. Um, we talked about this earlier, but just to reiterate this, um, don't put down every pedal that you have just because you have it. 
every single thing you add to your pedal board, it's going to be oh, one. Oh, I know Jerry just got real sad. <laughs> <laughs> I've got doubles of pedals. Well, and here's what happens when you put 32 pedals on your pedal board, something's going to break at every gig. Right. Because you've just added that many more connections and switches and everything. So think about it. You go, you know, hey, I'm going to use this pedal literally once a night. Do I need it? Or if you have it at home, maybe you break it up into a couple. You're like, hey, this yeah. is what I play my punk rock on. This is what I play my what I'm shoegaze really, on. Probably what I'm going to yeah. do. You know? Yeah. This is what I play on my stoner rock on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And have yeah, different yeah, pedal boards. Because you really purposes. wouldn't mix those yeah. anyways for the most part yeah right and and again it, it goes back to like you said reliability yeah you know so if you just put everything down there and it's not gonna be reliable well yeah kind of most people who have like you know three different reverbs and a delay right. aren't probably aren't gonna be going like yeah let's jam some daredevils right in between that right. you know and yeah. go for like maximum fuzz and all the ambience right and you gotta ask yourself do you, do you need three delays you need two reverbs and and i there's have done, a lot of people shaking their head vehemently well, right now and i tell you what and i've done pedal boards for those guys and a lot of times if you, two different reverbs one or two different delays one analog one a digital delay a couple different reverbs maybe if you're really into ambience but when you get more than that redundancy it just becomes mush and those are the guys that end up bringing them back to me and going, man, I'm having stuff fail at every gig and now this failed on me. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. So just keep that in mind when you're building this. Good idea. Um, last couple things assembly. Mm hmm. Jared mentioned Velcro. Yep. Um, I am a huge fan of dual lock. Yeah. If you want the pedals to stay but still be able to pull them off quickly, dual lock. That stuff is absolutely amazing. So that looks kind of like Velcro, but it's, it's plastic. plastic. Yeah. yeah. And it's I like little, me that dual lock little teeth. You have a temple board. You don't... You, uh, <laughs> so I can't use dual lock? No, you got you got to get you the can. things that go on the bottom of the temple I gotta board. I got to get the things? Yes, yeah, yes. just get the things. The things. That's, the what you, that's what it's for. The cupcakes. That's kind of the whole point of the temple board. Yes. But again, like we've been saying this whole podcast, I mean, you there's no right or wrong. You down if you right. want. Exactly. But you, or you could do the thing. I like this guy. Yeah, duct tape them. Whatever you want to do. Dude, send yeah. me a link to buy them. I think you could weld them to that. Yeah, yeah. we could yeah. do that. Anyways, take weld them. dual lock. Yeah, so I, I always prefer dual lock over Velcro. Velcro, it wears. Uh, the glue usually doesn't stick very well. Just yeah. everything about it. And, and the idea. Hot summer day. <laughs> yeah, and the Velcro too, it, it'll shear, meaning like if your pedal board's sideways, the pedals will kind of shear off and come off. Yeah. Where dual lock, the only way to get your pedal off, you have to insert a flat piece of metal in there, like a screwdriver or something, and it pops off. Mm -hmm. And it really does lock. I mean, you can hear it physically yeah. lock in, you know? Yeah. I'm mean, Of course, it's more expensive, but you also don't have to use big strips of it. Yeah. Just little uh, squares. For, uh, a comparison is the, you know, if you're hanging a picture and you're using the 3M things that have the pull tabs mm -hmm. instead of driving a nail in it, that's essentially dual lock, except yeah. a very, very small version of it. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, man, it's made by 3M. So yeah, so dual lock. Um, I prefer zip ties for everything for cable management too. Super easy, cut them off, no big yep. deal. Keeps everything nice and Keep tidy. Keep everything tidy as you as you possibly can. I th for me sometimes there's things where I'm just like, this is actually going to create more of a mess if I try to organize everything because everything is just literally going every which way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes you don't have the convenience of running customized length cables on everything, yeah. which can give you that ultimate. You know, it, exactly. And, and that's that goes, pedal board porn right there. I and, mean, that's like, and that goes know. back to that. Usually if you have the larger board along right. with everything else, that's when you're cutting your cables to length. Right. And, and at the same probably time, probably when you have a tech doing exactly. it, especially if you're, you know, if you're playing out too, the more tidy you have, the less gaff tape you'll have to use. Well, the big thing is if you have everything tightened down very tight, the mm. cables aren't moving in the pedals. Nothing will happen. No mistakes. Ideally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And when you're out and you're in the middle of the song, you ruin the flow of the right song. Back. You're in big trouble. Right. Reliability. Yep. Yeah. Um, to that point, measure twice, cut once. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, you waste a lot of cable. I've seen guys do that. They'll buy 10 or 20 feet of cabling. That's expensive. Yeah. It's then they so call expensive. me up and they need another 10 foot. I'm like, what'd you do? He's like, man, I cut it like half an inch too short. And now that piece is wasted. And it's. Yep. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> you know? I threw it away. I was so mad. Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, and then, of course, this is kind of common sense, but I even do this. Um, test every cable if you're making them to length or even if you just purchased them test all your cables before right. you strap everything how down. would you test your cables cable tester they're like 30 40 bucks okay um you just plug it in you push a button and it lights up and tells you if it 
and you can test your you can test your patch cables, your mm-hmm. ins and outs. Yep, and most of the cable testers are you. Uh, they have RCA, um, XLR, quarter inch. Mm-hmm. You know, so it'll test all types of different cables. Is gotcha. there? What about the old school? Put it into the amp and touch the tip. <laughs> Sure, but it won't tell you if the cable's it's partially or open or partial. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. I wanted to bring that up because yep. that's just yeah. an I old actually, way. I actually, I, whenever I'm building a pedal board, I of course test every end with a multimeter, so sure. that way I can see. And and sometimes I'll make like I'll make one of the George L ends or a lava cable end, and I'll measure it from tip to tip. It comes up a hundred ohms on a mm. tester. It would read fine because only hundred ohms, but it's technically not a hundred percent. You know, there's a little bit of capacitance in there causing that. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, test all your cables before you assemble and zip tie everything down and call it a day. Gotcha. That's it. Woo, doggies. That is a lot. That is a lot of awesome information, man. It's I'm, a lot of stuff. Sorry. I'm so <laughs> glad that you came and, and, and did this with us. I, I know that we all are a little glassy-eyed right now. And uh, if you're... <laughs> Still listening, which I tr- I truly <laughs> hope you are. Um, Everybody turned off twenty minutes ago. I, no, I don't think so because this is all really. These are all the questions that we all asked. So this is yeah. it's fantastic stuff. I learned a lot too. Yeah, uh, for sure, I sure did. Um, and uh, you know, if you if you have more questions about this, uh, you know, you can drop us a line. Uh, you can drop Rob a line. Yep. And, and you know ask away um, or consult the internet and make your own decision. Yep. Or like we said last time, make friends with your local techs. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. Your pedal mongers. Make like friends. Yeah. Your, your, your <laughs> electronic repair guys or your guys at your local shop. Those guys have all been through all this stuff. Wealth of knowledge. I have yep. two amps in my truck waiting for Rob. Woohoo. Did I mention ching yeah. yeah. Right after Christmas. Thank you, Jared. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, so uh, I knew that loading them into my truck. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Do it. Well, gentlemen, yes. it's time for Would You Rather. That was a good one. Yeah. Thank you. So you're in a 70s glam band, okay? And it's like, a cover band because it's not the 70s anymore. Yeah. But you're, you've got these awesome boots. They're huge, giant clonking boots. Clonking. Are they sparkly? And they're super sparkly. I love it. Oh. Uh, yeah. They got stars. And then the heels, they there's goldfish them. in the heels, too. Goldfish? No. So. No. <laughs> are they alive? <laughs> they're no, not, they're no. Not take imps. the goldfish away. Not, not for long, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. So anyway, what are you going to use for a pedal board? Are you going to go with A, the flat board pedal board, or B, the wedge board? Mm-hmm. With these big, clonking, sparkly, awesome boots. Tony. Oh, man. I, I remember when I used to wear big, clonking, sparkly boots with goldfish in the heels. Yeah. <laughs> Last weekend <laughs> on vacation. Up in Youngstown. <laughs> Up in Youngstown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, in a bar full of legitimate businessmen. That's yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, given the fact that these are big, clonky boots... With goldfish in the heels, I'm going to go with the flat board. Really, I think okay. the flat board would would probably be easier because I'll still be stopping all over the pedals. Right. Um, all right. I, I I I think that's what I'm going with. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Good choice. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Jared. I need the wedge board because I mean I'm six foot six anyway. Yeah. So the closer so the pedals are in my vision, with an afro. I know. So well, I'm well, I'm going to do the wedge. There. I'm going to do the wedge. Okay. Flat. It has to be flat for me. I, you, you I like actually like flat boards. I can't even if I was not wearing the, the purple boot. sparkle with goldfish. No, <laughs> I'm flat. I can't do angled boards. I absolutely can't, just can't put my foot on a wall or volume pedal and have it be all angled. It's just oh uh, yeah. I just can't. Yeah. But now other guys they hate flat boards. So yeah, that's fair. Yep. All right. So yeah. I'm going wedge because I like my wedge right now. So yeah, there doing we go. that. And, so two uh, flats, two wedges. Yeah, and I'll and I'll play Fox on the Run. There it'll it be is. great. Yeah, that's right. I love it. I have played that. Uh, so, oh man, I'd love to. That that is a fantastic song. Everybody, go look that one up. Fox on the Run. Oh man, it's such a good song. Okay, we'll do it. <gasps> Tony, bring us home. At this point in the show, we like to thank some very important people. We like to call these people our executive producers. And uh, let's just say 
Christmas was what months ago. Mm-hmm. But you still have a little bit of that money that grandma or gave you. Or a month. You. Or a month. Yeah, whatever. Well, you know, sometime in the prior year. Yep. And uh, you say, you know, I'd like to help out a podcast in some way. How can I do that? Well, let me tell you how you can do that. Because right now, you could go to patreon.com mm-hmm. and look at all the various levels that you can become a sponsor of this podcast. Yep. And the piece de resistance level would be the executive producer. And you get so many great thank you gifts. Yep. You get t-shirts. You t-shirts. Get buttons. Buttons. Pins. Stickers. Pins. Barefoot button. Uh, all kinds of things. Yeah. But the biggest thing when you're an executive producer is, Jared, you get to have your name read on the thing. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Right. So... Let's just start from our newest and work our way back. Perfect. I'd like to thank Jonathan Jerusik, Ken Sayers, Corey Nigro, Doug Gann, Brad Partridge, Michael Van Zant, Doug Christ, Zach J. Wright, Gary Goodman, and son Beckett. Woohoo! Uh, Darren Gregory, Robert Marfleet, John Anglin, Chris Kearney. Sean Sa. Oliver Gonzalez, John Daly, Robin Smith, Pete Marshall, Carlos Mancha, Matt Brammer, David Wolfson, Martin Cliff, and Tom Barazin. There you go. Yes. We got Thank you. It. Thank you. One and all. Thank you very much, everybody. Hey, it's, as we do go through this new year, y- your help is truly appreciated and welcome, and we thank you. We do all this because we love it, and we hope you li- love it too. Um, and it requires very little to help us out, and it would it mean a lot to us. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. My man, where can people find you, Rob? Mad, a- a- Mad Cow Amplification dot com mm-hmm. or Mad Cow Amplification on Facebook or Instagram. Okay. Yep. Your Instagram is probably your strongest game. Most definitely. That yeah. actually feeds everything, yeah. Right. You know, okay. I was kind of curious. Why are the cows so mad? Well, mad cow amplification. Uh, you want to actually know where that came from? Yes. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> yeah, there was a friend of mine. Um, I was trying to come up with a name for the company, so I had to be something unique, and I didn't want something like too lame, and we live in Cowtown. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Right. So right. Mad Cow, yeah. Well, yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tony, where can people find you? Let's just say you want a custom pick guard and you want Todd's eyes to bulge out of his head. <laughs> <laughs> go over to pickguardian.com. Yeah, we can do anything from you know special different I types just, of I just ordered one from you. Yeah, there was one. a beautiful one. A gold yeah. sparkle. Gold sparkle. Gold I got sparkly. a mini humbucker into a telly jazz bastard yeah. thing. Yeah. And it's good. So, so you know, people change out good. pickups all the time yep. or they want to change the color or whatever. Yep. Um, hop on over to pickguardian.com. You can check out some of the projects and things that uh, I've been doing on Instagram mm-hmm. and some things on Facebook mm-hmm. under Pick Guardian and the number one. Cool. Jared. Well, uh, if you guys are looking for some new pickups, some new old looking pickups that you want to match into an old vintage guitar or whatever, uh, give me a shout at Jared at BrandonWalmPickups.com. Uh, find me at BrandonWalmPickups.com, Instagram, Facebook, all the things. And all the things. I can do repairs too. Yeah, right on. So uh, you can drop me a line at Todd at TheGuitarNobs.com. We are thank you, thankful for you listening. Um, this has been a long one, uh, but we really appreciate it. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I know we did. And in the meantime, have a great guitar week. Subscribe! Yeah. This isn't, this isn't Hamlet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> get, bring it home, son. <laughs> it's kind of like the Christmas tree lights. Yeah. Want to do another clap? Uh, yep. Okay, we're going to lose that. Chicago overload, Chicago. overload. D- D- Daredevil. Um. <laughs> well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, 
and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also, be sure to check out our Instagram at Guitar Knobs. Catch you next time.